Hi, welcome to Qubytes, your bite-sized pieces of quantum computing. My name is Rene from Law Reply, and today we're going to talk about what NVIDIA is doing with quantum computing. And for this, I'm very honored to have a special expert guest today, Jin Sung Kim. Hi, Jin, and welcome to the show. How are you today? Hey, Rene. It's great to be here. Uh, thanks for having me on the show. Awesome. Well, first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background as it relates to the topics about quantum computing, computer science, and all of these things we're talking today. Yeah, so uh, I'm the developer relations manager for quantum computing at NVIDIA, which means I'm in charge of the quantum ecosystem in, re in, in regards to NVIDIA quantum products and software. So my job is to enable researchers within the field who are working on quantum and make sure that they have the best tools available to them. Uh, understand what direction the field is going and making sure that we're building products and features that best enable folks within the field of quantum computing. Uh, so I guess a little bit about my background. Uh, my background is directly from the field of quantum computing. I did my PhD at Princeton uh, in electrical engineering and material science with Steve Lyon, where I studied uh, electron spins in silicon quantum dot devices. Uh, and I actually made some of the cleanest uh, silicon quantum dot devices in the literature. So I've been making this joke since I was a grad student, but uh, the, the electron mobilities from the devices I've made in grad school are still higher than the ones reported by Intel today. So still quite proud of that. Uh, I then spent uh, about three years as a research scientist at IBM Quantum, where I worked a, a bit higher in the stack, looking at qubits and characterizing noise in uh, quantum systems. Um, before moving on to more applications and demonstrations. So actually, uh, one of the papers I published while I was at IBM Quantum was an experimentally verified instance of quantum advantage, where we demonstrated that a quantum computer can actually do certain computations uh, with higher fidelity than a classical computer where, uh, when you restrict the computational space. And I guess for better or worse, uh, the thing that people probably would know me the best for is my YouTube series while I was at IBM Quantum, uh, Coding with Qiskit, uh, where I taught folks how to program quantum algorithms using Qiskit. And, uh, and I guess in real life, people actually recognize me more for this than any of my other work uh, in quantum physics. So I um, started my, uh, from material science and device level of quantum devices, then moved to qubit systems and improving gates and quantum applications, to now my role at NVIDIA, where I have sort of a bird's eye view of uh, the quantum ecosystem and help drive the software tools that enable uh, the quantum accelerated supercomputing system of tomorrow. Well, thank you. That's pretty impressive, in fact. So you went actually through the whole stack, like from material science, through like the whole thing now right. in, in the developer relations field. Like that's well. right. I tried to cover the whole the whole field from uh, the ground up. Awesome, awesome. Well, that's well, we have you here, and you're super knowledgeable. And but let's talk about Nvidia and what Nvidia is doing in the in the quantum space. Um, of course, you know I'm I'm watching GDC and all the other news and announcements and. You know, throughout the last couple of years, we have all been seeing that NVIDIA is, of course, uh, you know, growing also with quantum. Um, but can you give us an overview and tell us uh, in which areas NVIDIA is working on when it comes to quantum? Yeah, so uh, essentially in a nutshell, NVIDIA is working on and has developed tools for everything in the quantum computing stack, except for the actual quantum hardware. So the first thing that we developed, uh, and we released this last year, is uh, QQuantum, which is a set of software libraries that accelerate quantum circuit simulation on NVIDIA GPUs. So a big part of uh, driving the field forward is developing quantum algorithms and identifying what use cases will actually benefit from quantum acceleration when quantum advantage actually arrives. Uh, so fast simulations of large qubit systems in a gate model is actually a really fantastic tool for this since quantum computers today are still, you know, they've gotten much, much better over the years, but they're still pretty noisy, uh, expensive, and uh, they're not really ubiquitous, so you can't just uh, submit a job to uh, a quantum processor and expect your results back, uh, you know, immediately. Yeah. So in this sense, uh, GPU accelerated simulation is a great alternative tool. Right. And in terms of kind of the performance benchmarks, uh, a lot of folks uh, are not super familiar with uh, how well uh, GPUs work for these types of things. So the, the performance benchmarks that we've seen uh, doing quantum circuit simulation is actually really, really fantastic on GPUs. So we've seen up to uh, like 300x improvements in performance running a quantum circuit simulation on a GPU system compared to uh, a pretty powerful server grade CPU. So what this means is if you have some large scale simulation, say like a 30 qubit uh, variational quantum Eichen solver, uh, and you're simulating this, uh, this might run on uh, well, uh, a CPU in say an hour, but 
with the 300x speed up, this will run in less than a second, which really, really improves your development cycle and saves the researchers uh, valuable time. Um, so the other main thrust that we've developed is a unified programming model and compiler for hybrid quantum classical computing called CODA, or the Quantum Optimized Device Architecture. Got it. Got it. So we're going to dive a little bit deeper also into, into simulation part of this. Um, but yeah, it's it's really impressive, like what I've seen at, um, you know, also on the website at, at Nvidia and, and some of the simulations that are running. But again, we will dive a little bit deeper uh, later into this particular part because super exciting stuff. But let's let's actually hear a little bit more about this hybrid quantum classical computing platform, which is a very long name, um, <laughs> but it's called NVIDIA CUDA. No, Q -O -D CODA. CODA, sorry, yeah. Mm -hmm. So CODA, that's the short name. So NVIDIA QODA CODA. All right. And so there's this unified programming platform. What is it and why is this useful? Yeah, so CODA uh, with a Q is really the quantum analog of the CUDA programming model for GPUs. So what CODA does is allows the user to program quantum processors alongside the best classical tools uh, in the same workflow and in a performant way. So we announced this last summer, and we're partnering with a growing list of quantum hardware providers like Quantinium, Rigetti, Pascal, Quantum Brilliance, IQM, uh, Xanadu. Uh, more, along, more are coming uh, on the way. Uh, and we've done this to enable people uh, to program hybrid quantum classical systems. Uh, and really importantly, Coda will be open and open sourced. So uh, I guess... Why, why are we doing this? Why is hybrid quantum classical programming so important? Uh, well, it's really important because uh, all valuable quantum applications of the future will be some sort of hybrid application. And we imagine that the first instances of really useful quantum computing will be using a quantum computer to accelerate some bottlenecked part of a classical computation running on CPUs and GPUs. So if you want to think of a few examples, uh, you can think of something like, uh, you know, a classical molecular dynamic simulation where maybe uh, a large por portion of the code runs really well on CPUs and GPUs. Uh, but maybe you also want to offload uh, the actual quantum interactions of when the molecules actually collide with each other uh, to a, a quantum computer. Mm -hmm. So maybe another example of a hybrid uh, application is uh, something like a quantum generative adversarial network. So there's a lot of promise in uh, quantum machine learning applications, and people have shown, uh, you know, there's uh, advantages in expressivity and uh, uh, neural networks uh, uh, in a in a quantum computer. So maybe one would want to use a, a quantum generator and a classical discriminator in this use case. So Coda makes these kind of uh, programming heterogeneous uh, resources, simple and performant. So uh, in addition, what we also want to do is enable uh, this very large uh, community of HPC developers uh, to program quantum computers in a familiar work environment. So if you think about how quantum computers are programmed today, uh, it's essentially the equivalent of quantum assembly language, where you have to kind of individually uh, program quantum gates on individual qubits. And it's really the domain of experts in uh, quantum physics. So this, of course, is not very scalable when it comes to programming larger applications uh, in a, you know, the future useful applications uh, of the future. So what we're doing is providing a library of higher level quantum, primitive, quantum primitives, which helps the domain scientist, who's not necessarily an expert in quantum physics, uh, program a quantum computer alongside CPUs and GPUs uh, in the same workflow. Uh, I do want to comment briefly on the name CODA, which again is Quantum Optimized Device Architecture. And if you know something about the history of NVIDIA, you'll notice that CODA sounds very similar to CUDA, that's CUDA with a C, which stands for Compute Unified Device Architecture, and is the platform released in 2007 for easily programming NVIDIA GPUs. So a bit of a history lesson. Uh, so once upon a time, uh, GPUs were only used for gaming and generating graphics. Uh, this is the original purpose of uh, these chips and the original purpose of uh, the company. But then, you know, in the early 2000s, uh, some very smart researchers found out that you can actually program GPUs to do scientific computations. And it turns out they're, they're really, really good at it. <clears throat> but the problem at this point was you had to essentially map some, uh, you know, difficult, hard um, scientific computational problem into some format that uh, the GPUs at the time could understand, uh, meaning you you literally had to program shader APIs and essentially trick the the GPU into thinking it was 
computing some graphics and then take that output and then map it back onto your scientific problem. So this was obviously very difficult and annoying to do. So what NVIDIA did at that time was develop CUDA, that's CUDA with a C, back in around 2006, 2007, which was a program, programming model, which made it easy to program GPUs along CPUs in a high level language. So what CUDA did back then was immediately enable scientists and researchers to now do scientific computations on GPUs. Uh, then a few years later, a guy named uh, Alex Kruzewski famously demonstrated that using CUDA uh, yeah, in what's now known as AlexNet uh, and demonstrated that deep neural networks actually run really well on GPUs. And this really was uh, the thing that kind of kicked off the, the AI revolution and essentially all of uh, a, uh, modern AI workloads. So what we're hoping to do with CODA, that's CODA with the Q now, the quantum version, is to arm scientists and researchers with the programming tools to enable hybrid quantum classical applications. And when the ecosystem has the right tools at its disposal, um, you know, amazing things will happen in the future. Well, that's, that's awesome. Thanks for, for giving an overview of the um, uh, CODA. Um, and yeah, I, I very much remember, I'm old enough, you know, I was actually also using a CUDA and um, the general term is a GP, GPU. If yeah, that's know. right. <laughs> it wasn't even a GP back then. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Yeah, so GP, GPU, and CUDA, like you're saying, it enabled so many folks like um, in, in science. It's it's crazy. And this is the, the standard basically today. Right, right, right. So yeah, I mean, let's see where uh, CUDA comes actually, um, or where CUDA actually ends up. But yeah, if, it's, if it takes the name from CUDA, it has a bright future, surely. Um, <laughs> so yeah, no, awesome stuff. And yeah, I really like what you also mentioned about this hybrid approach and, and a QML. We actually had also a few um, uh, folks here at, at Qubyte's show uh, talking about quantum machine learning. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, we also discussed these kind of hybrid architecture where you have, uh, for example, one layer, typically one of the later layers, almost the, maybe the, the one before the output layer. This is like your, your quantum layer, basically, where you can represent, because you just need a few uh, qubits, basically, and you can even run it on a on a real quantum computer. And uh, yeah, the results are pretty impressive already. Right, right, yeah. Like more precision, higher precision, and, and better speed, in fact, as well. And, right. Uh, very promising. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for this because, you know, like you're saying, we have, of course, AlexNet and all these models enabled a lot of things, but now we have these super large transformer models like GPT-3 and, and what have you. And it's Stable like, diffusion, yeah. <laughs> exactly. All of that stuff. These are huge, right? And it, it takes ages to train them. It's costly as well. And these hybrid approaches might provide a novel solution there. Um, right. And even when a quantum advantage arrives, uh, GPUs and CPUs will still play a very important part of the computing stack of the hybrid. Uh, e uh, exactly. Exactly. And that's, you know, I, I always keep, keep on saying this because a lot of folks, like when you talk with them about quantum, they always think, oh, when will be, you know, my smartphone here? When will I have a quantum computer in here? And they say, probably never. Um, right. Because we, we need deterministic <laughs> computing, right? And uh, we will still have classic computer. And folks should or rather think about a quantum computer like a GPU, right? The GPU is, is very good at specific things like you know, large computation with matrices and whatnot. And uh, the QPU or quantum processing units are very good at other specific problems. But you still need this kind of generic uh, you know, classical CPU, silicon-based um, uh, chip, of course. All right, and the platform to unify all of those things together. Exactly. There we go. Nice, and that's that's um, that's great stuff. And it gives us also the segue into the next one when we're talking about a GPU, because um, Nvidia is also providing these large-scale quantum simulation um, using Nvidia DGX uh, systems. And uh, on the software side, there's also, like you were saying, uh, the Q Quantum Library where you can uh, develop quantum circuits easier. And so can you explain how this works and, and how folks can actually get started? Yeah, so KuQuantum uh, is our library uh, of um, SDKs to accelerate quantum circuit simulations. Uh, so it consists of a state vector library and a tensor network library. And is it's currently integrated in all of your favorite quantum computing frameworks like CERT, Qiskit, Penny Lane, and many others. So KuStateVec, our state vector library, is great for simulating very deep and very entangled circuits at the expense of system size. So with the DGX A100 system, which is uh, eight GPUs, you can simulate about 36 qubits and even more with a supercomputer like a DGX SuperPod. 
Uh, you can also model noisy qubits with Kustateback, which is really great for understanding noise sources and evaluating uh, kind of what your error budget would be on an actual quantum computing system. Uh, we have a complementary library to Kustateback uh, called QTensorNet, uh, which is our tensor network library. This is great for simulating really large qubit systems, but at the expense of depth and entanglement. So we actually have a really nice demonstration of a 5,000 qubit simulation uh, for a max cut problem using QTensorNet, which we ran on our Selene supercomputer. Uh, and probably the easiest way to get started with QQuantum, uh, if you have access to an Ampere or Volta or, or Hopper GPU next year, uh, is to just download uh, the QQuantum appliance, which is available for free. This is our software container with QQuantum, uh, which now comes with the CERC and Qiskit front end and allows you to scale out your simulation size with uh, multi-GPU and multi-node support. And for those of us who don't have an A100 GPU just sitting at home, uh, you can spin one up on your favorite cloud service provider like AWS or GCP. Uh, and actually now, uh, this was announced, I think, a month ago, Oracle uh, on their cloud service has the QQuantum appliance already deployed as an app on their cloud. So that's, a, that's another point of entry. Uh, if you're a PennyLane user, uh, it's really easy to install QQuantum into PennyLane. You can just pip install QQuantum. Or uh, additionally, you can also go to Amazon Bracket and use the, the QQuantum PennyLane integration, uh, which is already available online. The, the back end for PennyLane is called uh, lightning.gpu, which is our QQuantum uh, integration. And in our latest release of our QQuantum appliance, we now support uh, multi-node execution. So what this means is you can easily do quantum circuit simulation at supercomputing scale. So uh, we actually have some really nice results uh, that we recently announced uh, coming out of ABCI, uh, demonstrating a really, really large uh, qubit simulation distributed across many GPU nodes at a supercomputing center. So uh, the performance is really, really good and uh, yeah, QQuantum allows you to pretty straightforwardly expand your uh, uh, problem size to uh, multiple GPU nodes. Uh, I guess on that note, the QQuantum appliance is already deployed on uh, a few different supercomputing centers as well, like uh, NERSC, uh, Seneca, NCSA, and more coming in the future. So if you're a, users, uh, uh, if you're a user of one of those facilities, uh, definitely check out QQuantum. Wow, this is um, amazing. and. What you just have been saying, like which conference is the big announcement happening? Can you just say it again? Oh, uh, so the uh, announcement for the ABCI result, we've uh, we've announced uh, the results uh, at Supercomputing. This was a couple of weeks ago, but we'll have a blog coming out that details uh, the full performance benchmarks and uh, uh, and the full results. Awesome. And yeah, like you're saying, like 5,000 qubits, stable qubits simulated. This is um, much more than we have like in physical systems these days. So. That's right. That's right. And, you know, for uh, for tensor network methods, uh, uh, these really excel for kind of shallow circuits. Uh, but there's a broad class of uh, interesting quantum applications, you know, uh, uh, various flavors of variational algorithms uh, tend to have relatively shallow uh, low entanglement circuit. So it's a great fit for uh, any of those applications. Absolutely. And, you know, on those nodes uh, around quantum simulation, in fact, we also, for one of our clients, a large energy grid provider, we have an optimization problem and uh, we developed a custom a Cubo for them, a uh, quantum algorithm. And we run this quantum algorithm also on GPUs, uh, on a simulator, basically. Oh, so quantum, ins quantum inspired optimization, as, as you, of course, know, and the uh, the interesting part about it is already on this quantum simulator with quantum inspired optimization, we're getting a twenty percent time saving for twenty thousand people. In fact, and wow! So this this is already providing an, a crazy um, kind of an optimization. And if we think about like we can do this already today with quantum simulation, because the quantum algorithm, the nature of the quantum algorithm, can although we don't have the powerful machines yet, we can simulate it. And we already see benefits with QIO. So that's fantastic. Sense. Yep. Uh, well, thank you so much, Jin, for sharing these insights. It was really, really good and very much appreciated because you, you know, went all over and explained like all the, the pieces that were NVIDIA is working on. Again, thank you so much. Just very much appreciated. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Well, and thanks everyone for joining us for yet another episode of Qubytes, your bite-sized pieces of quantum computing. Uh, watch our blog and follow our social media channels and hear all about the next episodes. And of course, 
subscribe to our YouTube channel if you don't want to miss an episode. Um, you can watch all previous episodes on the website from season one to season six. And until then, see you soon. Take care and have a good time. Bye bye.